I'm Erica Jacoby, and this is another Higher Things video short. Well, Wednesday takes on domestic violence. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing here at Higher Things, pass it on the face to the next generation, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app, and donate. Your tax-deductible gift keeps Higher Things, a youth organization that's all about putting the gospel into the ears of our youth, it keeps us a rolling. Wednesdays are all about being woke, and today, the ladies are taking over. In addition to Pastor Borghart, whose job I've stolen, Sandra Madden is my guest today because we will be devoting the next three woke Wednesdays to a very important and woke topic, domestic violence. In addition to serving as Higher Things content executive, Sandra serves on the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod's Domestic Violence and Child Abuse Task Force. We'll have uh, George put that in the uh, in the in the description below the link there. She's uh, is one of their featured expert speakers, and we get to have her as our in-house expert today. Welcome to Sandra, and welcome to your own video show, Pastor Bart. <laughs> <laughs> He's just nodding his head, shaking It is head. so right and so wrong in so many ways. Ah, isn't it fun? Okay. So um, <laughs> I have a couple statistics here, Sandra, from the yeah. National uh, um, uh, Council Against Domestic Violence. Um, thought it would be helpful to kind of start there. On average, nearly 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate part partner in the United States. During one year, this equates to more than 10 million women and men. So it's a big problem. It's a uh, big what, problem, yeah. It's a, it's a huge problem. And I know uh, in, in my former um, vocation as a high school teacher, they devoted quite a bit of time to tr uh, uh, trauma-informed instruction. And um, I, I know this is an issue that goes on with high school students. Um, it starts early. Um, kids are exposed to domestic violence in their homes from the beginning sometimes. Um, and the other, the other statistic I thought was important to bring up is one in four women and approximately one in nine men experience severe intimate partner physical violence, intimate partner contact sexual violence and or intimate partner stalking. Um, and that impacts them with things such as injury, fearfulness, post-traumatic stress disorder, use of victim services, contraction of sexually committed transmitted diseases, and it goes on and on. So there's a lot of lasting effects to this stuff. Um, so, Sandra, what is up with the purple profiles in October? Football wears pink. <laughs> uh, but do you do, but you do purple. Is it like Advent? Talk about that a little bit. Right. Um, pink is, is the popular color for people to be wearing in October. Um, it's, it's, Something that, like, the sports teams, the pro sports teams will incorporate some sort of pink at least one week, one game in, in October, sometimes all of them, um, for their to show their support and advocacy and awareness about uh, breast health. Breast cancer is what they're trying to bring awareness to, which is kind of, kind of um, ironic and telling that they choose that over supporting awareness for domestic violence, considering all the problems that come up on a pretty regular basis in those professions regarding domestic yeah. violence. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So it's yeah. not something that as many people are aware of, but it's, it's growing and it's something that's very necessary. And I have um, just made it a, a personal tradition the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years to change my own profile to purple in October and post daily, if I can remember, it's hard to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just something that brings awareness and advocacy to the problem of domestic abuse. Thank you. Hey, Pastor Burkhart, you didn't think you were going to get away with not just sitting there and, you know, not answering any questions, right? Do you, um, obviously in your uh, vocation as pastor, you come across this. Do you get special training as a pastor? Do you does does this come up a lot? Do you see that these statistics bear out even in the in the church? Oh, uh, where there's sin, there's abuse. Um, there's all sorts of abuse. There's a, a domestic violence which pertains to 
uh, spouses, and there's domestic violence, which pertains to children. And so yeah. um, this is everywhere. Where there's sin, there's abuse. There's always abuse. So I hope that helps. Okay. You should try doing a video every day, Sandra. It's much more difficult <laughs> than just posting something. Excuse me. You can, those are schedule Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to disappear We're again. doing great. Um, Sandra, what does domestic violence awareness have to do with being woke? Why are we talking about it today? Is it like a feminist thing? That is a common misconception um, because there is a lot of overlapping history. Um, awareness of domestic violence as a problem came about kind of around the same time as the women's movement. Maybe you could even say it was kind of inspired by the the women's movement in the 60s and 70s and 80s that as they were working towards equal rights for different things and uh, women's rights for in different areas, they were networking more than maybe they had in the past and were finding out that there are some real problems regarding domestic violence, uh, some real inequalities and problems in the law and how it's prosecuted and challenges that women were facing, especially um, during that time. And so they kind of developed, there's some overlapping, like I said, and kind of developed around the same time, but it is not a feminist issue by any means. Um, there are feminist advocacy issues that, that overlapped and had something to do with women being able to fight against domestic violence because it hasn't always been illegal. It right. is actually only in the last generation or so that it's even been made illegal, um, that it was punished in family courts rather than in civil courts. So an abuser would yeah. not be punished as harshly if he assaulted a stranger in the same way that he was assaulting his wife until about the 60s or 70s. Um, that's the kind of struggles that women were dealing with at the time. And so it's developed kind of parallel paths, but as more um, more research has gone into it, they are seeing the real problems psychologically, socially, developmentally, as children are raised around it. Yeah. Um, all these things that are very, very real, and they cross all boundaries. It's not just women, it's men, it's all social classes, it's all races, it's all ages. It, it affects everybody. There are no boundaries to it like that. So it can't. It's not really a feminist issue. The feminist movement, in a way, just kind of pulled the veil off of it. Okay, that's a that's a good explanation. So I think this is a good time then for you to help us understand or to define what what is abuse because the word does get used a lot, and I think it's important yes. in um, in this context to kind of just just to define what that that con what that is right it, it is really important and um i have a very specific definition of abuse that i'm going to read so i don't mess up my words because i i use it like i said very specifically that abuse is a deliberate pattern of behavior used by one person in an intimate relationship to intimidate his or her partner and thereby gain or maintain power and control in the relationship. Okay. And so it's not just someone's a jerk or someone yeah. says something or does something that's mean or hurts me or something like that, because it needs to be differentiated from situational violence. And situational right. violence is basically what happens when you have a conflict between two people with poor conflict resolution skills. Um, mm -hmm. so get angry, things get out of control, something happens, someone yells, something gets thrown, someone gets hit, and it's a back and forth kind of escalation of the situation, stress induced usually. Um, and that's not, it's not good. That's not healthy. That's not how relationship should be. But abuse is a deliberate pattern of behavior used to get control over a person, a partner in the relationship. Okay. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, it's not like, you know, when my brother and I were teenagers and we're mad at each other and, 
you know, it gets physical or he calls me names or does that kind of thing. That's just us being bad teenagers, right? <laughs> you're talking Most about, likely, you're yes. talking about like, yeah, yeah. Or it's more, you're talking about a, a power dynamic, a, exactly. um, using, using, uh, behavior they can be and they're not necessarily physical right it could be um oh, no. physically abusive like you could use words you can use it's scare tactics that kind of thing in order to sort of be the top dog am i hearing am i hearing that right, right? and it's it's go, it's ongoing correct the thing about abuse is that you can't go through a checklist and mark things off and then say if you got so many you know seven out of ten of these things that's abuse that's not quite the way it works um, because you can have all of those things in a situational violence kind of relationship. The thing that makes it abuse is, are these things happening and causing you fear of that person? And you're afraid of what they will do if you don't do what you're supposed to do. And those things may happen. And so you are thereby controlled in the relationship. Understand. So it's it's a little bit of a different way of, they're, they're red flags for abuse to that those checklists that you see they may or may not be but if you're seeing a lot of them and you're kind of realizing yeah I, I am afraid of that person then there's probably a good chance there's abuse going on okay so I think we're already at our 10 minute mark this is why we are talking about this for the next three woke Wednesdays I'd like to sort of um move on and um uh for today and let Pastor Borghart talk just this one time right Pastor Borghart you're on the hot seat <laughs> It is um, his show. We, we do. We need a pastor now. So, um, Pastor Borghart, again, I'm going to ask you to kind of put this in the Christian worldview. Um, I think this is a really tough issue for um, the church to kind of deal with. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, perhaps what 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 can be done? What is the um, what can the church know about this in order to help those that are hurt by domestic violence? Um, and, and where to go, where to go with it. I think, um, first we have to uh, sort of identify sin as sin. When we physically engage somebody, whether it's poor, <laughs> I love this, poor conflict resolution skills or, um, attempt to control them by force, we have crossed the fifth commandment and we're in the sin. And so we, we, and I think next week we're going to need to talk about um, and she signaled two things that were really, really excellent. One, the difference between the sort of markers for abuse, um, sort of warning signs for young people that they might be involved in an abusive relationship. She also signaled another thing, which, which is the difference between Christian headship and um, abuse. So these are, these, are, these are things that we want to make sure that we hit next time. Um, what I would say simply is if you are one who feels like they're in a situation that is not healthy. You're not alone. That there was one who was abused his whole life for you and for your sake, Christ. Um, and that he, he knows your pain, he knows your suffering, um, and he was abused even unto death, death on the cross. And so uh, as we sort of work through these topics, we have to understand we have a Lord who was abused. Um, and he, so he knows our pain, he knows our suffering, he knows our, 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 he knows how to bear that um, for us and for our salvation. So I look forward to the next few weeks having Sandra on the hot seat uh, to answer those questions because these are very, 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 very good sort of thought-provoking comments that she's made, and we're going to have to deal with it. But you know, since it's since you've taken over the show, you get to do the exit. <laughs> I do. All right. Yes. Woke Wednesday has taken on domestic violence. Tune in for the next two Wednesdays. We're going to continue on with this topic. I'm Erica Jacoby, and this has been another Higher Things video short. <laughs>